is grace. That's a question I haven't really thought of. That's kind of a hard definition to, to give. I know it has something to do with God. Why that French woman that works at my apartment complex named Grace? To me, it's kindness and goodness. A uh, ballerina is graceful or something like that. Grace, basically, I would say to be thankful. I'm not big on definitions, but that's, that's what you do right before you eat. It makes me think of peacefulness. Does that help? It's the way somebody walks. Grace is something that you pick up from family. God is good. God is grace. Where does grace come from? Grace comes from your actions and your deeds. If you let it come to you, it'll it'll be there. You have to accept yourself, so it really comes from inside. I just think it's something that everybody should have. So I would say originally from God, but through other people. I guess from anybody, you know, anybody that wants to be graceful. I think you can find grace in other people. Inside you, in your mind. I do believe that grace comes from God. I think he's the only person qualified to give grace. Hey, welcome Family of Christ Cross Training students and families. Today we are in Family of Christ Worship Center or the Sanctuary. Uh, today we're starting a new unit, Unit 4, in which we're going to be talking about the means of grace as well as exploring living out our faith and our calling that is motivated by God's grace. Well, some of those are kind of fancy words, means of grace, grace, sacraments. Those are kind of churchy words that really are going to describe God's amazing love for us and how he gives that great gift to us. So thank you for joining today. Make sure you're ready for today's lesson by having your Bible and your catechism out and ready to go. Um, make sure you have your handout today. It's available online as well uh, under the resource section of this video. And make sure you print that off and then we'll run through the key points today as well. So. Let's get going, so grab your pencils, highlighters, and let's get started. So first of all, our lesson focus today is this, that the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church through the means of grace. Now I know those are kind of big, long, fancy, churchy words. Throughout this unit, we're gonna be um, describing them, uh, we're gonna define them, and help you understand what that means for you and for your walk with Jesus. So anyway, let's start out your, the key point number one, or the first question for today is this question, what is grace? So uh, you just watched that video a little bit ago and you know, the word grace, like the word love, has lots of different meanings within the English language. When we talk about grace in the context of scripture and in the context of Jesus, grace means this, it is God's unconditional love for us. Unconditional meaning that there's no repayment or no uh, uh, cost that we need to pay for that gift. It's a free, unconditional gift to us, and it's his love. When we talk about God's love, it also means much more than just having some ooey-gooey feelings for us. It really talks about how he loves us by serving us, caring for us, providing for our needs. So key point number two asks this question, moving on, it says, what is the means of grace? Now we talked about what grace is, God's love, his forgiveness. The means of grace is gonna talk about simply this. It's the means or the way by which God offers, bestows, seals, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Well, to help you understand that a little bit, uh, maybe you can relate to this. Let's say you have a friend that's moved away uh, or a loved one, maybe a grandparent is living in another state and you wanna to communicate to them that they are loved and valued by you. Well, there's some ways in which we can do that. One of the ways we did it in the olden days was an old letter we would write uh, inside and we would address it to the person we wanted to send it to. You put your return address and put a stamp on it and send it off. That's a means in which we can communicate to one another or uh, share a message. Uh, you know, by today we're way more um, modern with these computers we have in our pockets most of the time. Uh, you know, with a, uh, with a smartphone like this, you can text, you can email, you can call, you can FaceTime. Those are all different ways or means by which we can communicate, and in this case, communicating love. So when we talk about the means of grace, it's a way in which God dispenses this great, amazing love and forgiveness to us. So how do we receive the means of grace? That's question number three in your handout. Great question. So first of all, uh, the primary way that we receive it is through his word, through God's word scripture here. And, uh, and that's why it's important for us to be in God's word daily so that we can receive this gift of forgiveness and love, the message that is shared to us through his word. 
But there's also another uh, means by which God shares this um, unconditional love or his grace with us, and that's through the sacraments. Again, now sacraments is, is kind of a churchy word. Maybe you've heard it before. Maybe um, it's unfamiliar to you. And so we'll dig into it and define what that is. So that's the next question. What is a sacrament question for in your, in your handout? And a, a sacrament is simply this. It's a sacred act. Uh, so it's something that's done, it's holy, set aside, and it does the following. A, it's instituted by the command of Christ, which means that Christ commanded us to do this. He says, go do this. Uh, B, it always joins God's word of promise to a visible element. So it always includes the word of God and something visible, something you can taste, touch, smell, um, that we can experience in that way. And finally, see a sacrament does this. It offers the forgiveness of sins. And that's what really makes it special, is that it's the way in which God's forgiveness comes to us. Again, the means of his grace. So uh, that is a definition of a sacrament. The word sacrament really is not found in the Bible. It's, a, uh, it's actually a Latin translation of a certain word, but it's a word that we use to help us understand these special acts that we do in the church that are defined in the Bible. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. How many sacraments are there? Uh, it depends which church you go to, but in the Lutheran church, we believe that there are two based on that definition. Two, holy, uh, two sacraments, one is holy baptism and the Lord's Supper. And I have those with us today, some um, physical reminders of baptism and the Lord's Supper. And we'll talk a little bit about both of those in a bit. So why are we to treasure the sacraments when water, bread, and wine are such ordinary elements? Now, it's interesting, we just talked about a sacrament always has these visible elements. What makes those visible elements powerful? Is it that we get them from some special place? Is the wine uh, from the Holy Lands or the water? Is it holy water from the Jordan River? No, they're not. Actually, what makes the, uh, um, the elements, bread and wine and water in the sacraments powerful is because God's word is included in them. So if you notice in a worship service, again, um, it's a holy act typically done within the context of worship and in a, in a, in a church uh, through people that are trained to do that, ministers that are trained to do that. They always share God's word. It's intermixed with the physical elements and it allows God's work to be done through them. Uh, question number six is, how are the sacraments to be used? So now we've talked about the, the means of grace and how these uh, uh, sacraments uh, can happen, but how are we to receive them? And uh, to define that simply is that as sacraments are rightly used when we, we in faith trust the promises offered and given by Christ through them. Again, uh, the, the sacraments are typically done in a in a setting that um, you know uh, helps us be in a worship mindset with them. Uh, they're not to be ta taken lightly or done lightly, um, but it is really something that Christians do through faith and that Christ through the Holy Spirit initiates and does in our lives. So to wrap up today's session, again, we're gonna be digging in the next several weeks a lot more. We're gonna talk a lot more about baptism. We're gonna talk a lot more about communion and, uh, um, and then just how God works powerfully through those. Uh, our quotes of the day, I have two of them. The first one is from Jerry Bridges, and he says this. He says, our worst days are never so bad that you are beyond the reach of God's grace. That's good news. But he goes on, and he says, but even your best days are never so good that you're beyond the need of God's grace. Which reminds us that whether you're having a good day or a bad day, a tough day or an easy day, God's grace is always necessary. It's always sufficient for us. And then this quote from Anne Lamott, who says, I do not at all understand the mystery of grace, only that it meets us where we are, but does not leave us where it found us. And that's a great reminder that God's grace comes to us in our brokenness, but it heals us. It provides a spiritual uh, forgiveness, which because of God's grace, because of his love, his unconditional love for us, that's why we can love and serve and be gracious with others. Our uh, Bible verse for today comes from John 1, verse 16, and it's simply this, for from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. And just a reminder that God continually gives this abundant gift of unconditional love for us daily, day in and day out, and he doesn't, he doesn't get tired of it. 
Finally, uh, for our know what, so what, now what, I want to share this video that uh, reminds us about our brokenness that we all have, that through sin and through disappointment, uh, through the hurt that others might cause or hurt that we cause others, the guilt that we might have, that God's grace heals, forgives, restores, and because of that, we can be gracious with others. Check out this video. Days when the pain is a lot to carry. And the ones who are supposed to love you end up hurting you the most. And everything inside you wants to run. To hide to escape. And sometimes that's how you cover the pain. But that's not how scars work. They run deep. And so you pretend everything's okay. But the pain doesn't stop. I think pretending just makes it worse. Until you realize you're not alone. Other people are broken too. And they need someone to help. Someone who knows what it feels like. Who's walked through it. The pain can scar you. But it also changes the way you look around yourself. At the world. At people because no one's too broken for grace. That's what makes it grace. All right, welcome back. Uh, thank you for joining in today, and I hope uh, that uh, you are growing and being uh, realizing God's great love for you on a daily basis. Again, when you get done with today's lesson and filling in the key points, make sure you get together with somebody from your family, preferably a parent or uh, with your whole family if you'd like. Run through the, key, uh, the, the questions for discussion. Talk about those as a family. There are some questions you can ask your parents to get their perspective as well. Make sure you do your memory verse. And then at the very end, make sure that you have your parents sign off and sign off on your, your uh, memory work as well, just to show that you've done the work. Uh, when you get done with that, you can uh, either send it to me directly or just simply e uh, email or scan, take a picture, scan and send it to me. Show it to your small group mentor next time you're here, whatever works best for you. Hey again, thanks for joining us for Cross Training Online. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. God bless.